This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. President Biden's visit to Florida today comes after he visited Puerto Rico Monday, two weeks after Hurricane Fiona collapsed the island's electrical grid with high winds, storm surge and heavy flooding. Biden pledged disaster relief as he spoke from the ports of Ponce on Puerto Rico's southern coast, which faced significant storm damage. We're going to make sure you get every single dollar promised. And I'm determined to help Puerto Rico build faster than in the past and stronger and better prepared for the future. We know that the climate crisis and more extreme weather are going to continue to hit this island and hit the United States overall. And as we rebuild, we have to ensure that we build it to last. We're particularly focused on the power grid. Again, President Biden was speaking in Ponce, where Juan González was born. Well, Biden's trip to Puerto Rico comes five years to the day after then-President Donald Trump tossed paper towels to survivors of Hurricane Maria when he visited Puerto Rico after the Category 5 storm plunged much of the island into darkness for nearly a year. For more, we're going to San Juan to speak with Carla Manette, the executive director of the Center for Investigative Journalism in Puerto Rico. Carla, welcome back to Democracy Now! Uh, explain the extent of the damage. This is now two weeks after. I mean, clearly, Biden could not go to Florida without going to Puerto Rico, which is still bearing the brunt of the previous storm. Yes. Um, well, it was extensive damage, uh, particularly because of the floodings in the south part of the island and because of the uh, huge problems that we've been having with the electrical grid that uh, have clearly not been addressed since Hurricane Maria. Uh, actually, the official number from the government is that 10% uh, of 20% uh, of the population is still having problems with electricity, but uh, lots of uh, people are and communities are uh, saying that uh, they are not getting uh, power back. So um, there's no clear account about that uh, number right now. And, and Carla, I wanted to ask you, when uh, when this hurricane hit Puerto Rico, it was just a category one storm, not uh, mm -hmm. uh, with the power of a, of Maria or Irma or some of these others. Uh, uh, how is it possible that the entire grid, once again, of the island uh, uh, went down? And what's been the role of the private company that that the the, uh, the U.S. government forced Puerto Rico to take on uh, in in replacing the publicly owned utility that existed back in the days of uh, before Maria. Yes, basically the the electric grid has not been uh, repaired. Um, basically, less than uh, three percent of the. Uh, infrastructure money that was awarded after Hurricane Maria has been used for for infrastructure five years after Maria. Uh, the process of privatization of the um, generation part of the electricity company uh, has been a huge uh, problem. Um, there's a lot of uh, 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 problems that have arisen from that transition. And uh, this company, Luma Energy, um, has been uh, has been reported that has a lot of uh, conflicts of interest in Puerto Rico, hiring its own um, partners uh, for different tasks that are being uh, are supposed to repair the, the grid and are not being done correctly. Um, so I guess the uh, there, there was a perfect storm in, in, in terms of the electric grid. No money uh, from Maria has been used. A new pri privatization company who's not from Puerto Rico and doesn't have the amount of employees it needs uh, to respond to uh, an emergency like this one. Uh, they don't even know the, the ground here in Puerto Rico. So all those things together... Uh, are a big problem, especially for um, people in the rural areas and for electricity-dependent population, people who need um, medical machines uh, to live, uh, which is a big population in Puerto Rico. 
And I wanted to ask you, it's been now um, six years since a financial control board was imposed by Congress on Puerto Rico and has always made all of these predictions about how the, uh, the economy of the island and the government budget will be fixed. But uh, Valerie Juresco, who was the, uh, uh, for most of this time, the CEO of the control board, uh, the, she's the Ukrainian American who actually came to Puerto Rico after being the finance minister, people forget this, in the Ukraine uh, uh, after the uh, Maidan revolution. She took over the finances of Ukraine, and then she came to, uh, to Puerto Rico. She resigned in April. What, had there been any change in the, in the policies of the PROMESA board since Juresco left? None that uh, I've, I've, I've learned from um, since uh, Natalia Jaresco went. No, no, um, no appointment has been made. There is no list of people that have been public, uh, been considered for the position. And um, no, the fiscal control board has kept his uh, its austerity policies uh, from then on. And um, also, his lack of transparency uh, policies. As a matter of fact, yesterday, um, U.S. Supreme Court uh, is, uh, you know, uh, said that they would take a case that we are um, in which we are CPI is asking for public documents from six years ago. And um, they they uh, they got the certiorari, so they are going to hear the case uh, in the next month to see if the control board has to deliver the documents that they have exchanged with the government of Puerto Rico, which is what we have been asking for. So their transparency policy is in the same in the same place. Well, Carla Minette, we want to thank you so much for being with us, executive director of the Center for Investigative Journalism in Puerto Rico, speaking to us from San Juan.